Hello and welcome to Prudent Media Ghazali. Today we discuss a very very important subject, Uniform Civil Code. The subject which has been discussed all over the country today. The government wants to implement it, but we have the Muslim community objecting to it. What exactly is the objection? To know more on this, we have with us an esteemed guest, Janab Zafariyab Jilani Saab. Zafariyab Jilani Saab, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. To know more about Jilani Saab, a brief introduction would be having a master's degree in law, senior advocate of Lucknow bench for Lucknow bench of Allahabad High Court, also the convener of Babri Masjid Action Committee. He is also additional advocate general of the UP government. He is also the executive member of the All India Muslim Personal Law Board. Jilani Saab, uh, first of all, we have been hearing about this Uniform Civil Code. What exactly is the problem? Why exactly is the Muslim community objecting to this code? You see, in the entire country, there is no example of Uniform Civil Code so far. But in Goa, the uh, state is having a type of Uniform Civil Code in the shape of Family Laws Act. What we find here is that whether he is a Muslim or Hindu or Christian, his marriage is not recognized under law unless it is registered and registration requires a mode. Then after registration, the, the effect is that whether he is Muslim or Hindu, there is equal distribution of uh, inheritance while it is not so in, in, in Muslim law. They, then person, the, the couple or a spouse, they do not have a right to divorce according to their choice as is permissible under Muslim law. They have to wait for years together okay. for seeking, suppose they are, they are, their union is not functioning properly and both of them want. Islam okay. permits it that they can, uh, husband can give a divorce if my wife also wants, there no problem should be there. But here under the law of Goa, uh, a couple is not allowed to have separation, legal separation, so okay. as to entitle them to have fresh marriage. Okay. Or remarriage. This this itself shows that these w similar provisions will be there right. if KFA uniform civil code is enforced in the uh, in the entire India where it is not so. Then we will not have any right uh, uh, own uh, under the Sharia of Islam, okay. which is our personal, personal law. law, which is our personal yes. law, and which is per protected by Article 25 of the Constitution of India, and okay. also in the shape that it is otherwise also protected since 1937 in the shape of Sharia Application Act. So that is the main objection that Muslims do not want this type of law which is clear interference in their rights as well as in their fundamental right. Okay. Because for the, under Article 25 practice of Islam or practice of religion is also permitted. Therefore and the courts also have held so. The Supreme Court has at least in four cases not only of Muslims but also of Hindus and of tribals okay. it has held that no personal law cannot be interfered with by any court of law. The matter is still pending before Supreme Court, but so far the law of the land is that personal laws are not to be interfered with. Okay. And if uniform civil code is enforced, definitely personal law stands interfered like uh, it is in Goa. Sir, uh, we will come on that subject uh, with regards to Goa, but uh, generally a perception is that the uniform civil code, if implemented, Muslims will be affected. Will the Muslims only be affected or also the other communities also will be affected? No, all other communities will be affected. Just as I told you that in case of tribals with the, who are practicing in uh, Bihar a law of their own which was tested in a case uh, known as Madhu Kishwar case. The Supreme Court said there no law of inheritance was there with, for women. Supreme Court said it is violative of Article 14 but we will not interfere because it is the tribal's personal law and it should not be interfered with so lightly. Similarly, the Jains, uh, the Christians, Parsis may have their own personal laws. They are having it and they are opposing it. 
Person Law Board had held a convening meeting of all religions and the leaders of all religious communities had gathered and they all said that no, we are not going to change our personal law. So therefore, but since Hindu personal law was changed in a shape that uh, in 1956, uh, popularly known as Hindu Code Bill, yes. then all political leaders of Hindu community, including Dr. Rajendra Prashad, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, Sadar Patel, they had all agreed to have uh, changes in their personal law. Therefore, they want that uh, Muslim person law should also be interfered with, Christian person law should also be interfered with, whereas these communities are not. And today, Hindu Hindu community, because it has uh, its own functions, uh, customs in several states, which are not uh, uh, strictly covered by Hindu, Mar Hindu Marriage Act, Hindu Succession Act, and Tigers are also Hindus, but they don't have their law uh, similar to Hindu Succession Act. Therefore, they don't want that change. But the government, BJP government, is the center. They since they have given their manifesto that they want they will, if they come to power and they will have a uniform civil court. So sir, they are trying to. Sir, uh, you have you are a member of the All India Muslim Personal Law Board. I mean you are uh, you have been discussing this with the various religious leaders, leaders of the different uh, communities. Have you all also been discussing with the government at the center? If at all, then who are the people no. you have been discussing? You see, we have not discussed with any leader of the ruling party because they are for they have got their manifesto on this line. They don't say that they will not uh, implement their manifesto. So they have, they have, they declare it so. Therefore, there is no occasion. If, uh, if they want to discuss, we have not opposed to it. But what they want to discuss? They want to implement this uh, uniform civil code. They have given it to the law commission to consider the viability and how to what to enforce in the shape of then the Prime Minister has given a statement, they have filed their affidavit to the Supreme Court that they, they are against this triple divorce and polygamy. So a party a combination which is against it totally and which is declaring it so publicly, so there is no occasion for us to approach them for discussion. Sir, we have been hearing you know all these discussions which are happening, we have been always hearing that countries like Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Malaysia, a country is having a sizable Muslim population is also banned triple talaq system or polygamy. Sir, can you just share with us exactly what is the… No, you see, the na countries which you have named, generally they are, they comprise of more than 90 percent Muslim population and they are ruled by rulers who are Muslims. But in none of these countries, you will find a democracy like India a constitution like India. Indian constitution has from day one guaranteed religious freedom to all its citizens. And that religious freedom includes the right to profess, practice and propagate religion. In these countries, for instance in Saudi Arabia, there is no change but there is a, a regulation. The government regulates, nobody can give divorce whether one divorce or two divorce. They, they, the divorce is possible only through the agency of the government. In uh, Pakistan, there was dictatorship, Ayub Khan was there, they enforced the family law ordinance. But uh, we find that it is not workable there also, not working properly. In Indonesia, in this uh, Turkey, first as Kamal Atatur came into power, then he was not a Muslim ruler, he was a dictator. Wherever he, he even uh, did not allow this uh, burqa, did not allow this uh, naqab. So th if they change anything, it does not mean it becomes Islamic. What we uh, say in India, since India has been a country where Muslims have contributed equally in the freedom and then during those freedom struggle, the people and the leaders had uh, promised that no, it will not be a theocratic state, it will be a secular state and they, they, prom they acted according to their promise, they framed a constitution which is working for the last 67 years. Therefore, in India, these rights conferred upon the followers of all religions, whether they are minority or majority, they form the very basis of our personal laws. And therefore, in India, you cannot say that uh, government can legislate something which is against the constitution. And the, this very right has been protected by the Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land. And again, Supreme Court is testing it. We will argue before the Supreme Court. Correct. That is the difference, main difference between these countries which you have referred to. Yes, sir. sir uh, as 
it is discussed in the media today that basically uniform civil code will um, uh, the the problems faced by the Muslim woman uh, will be solved. What exactly is the ratio? Do you have any kind of data where you can say okay uh, that this is the percentage of Muslim women who are suffering due to triple talaq or these are the percentage of women who are facing uh, problems because of polygamy. Do you have any kind of ratio to prove this point of view? You yours? see, there is no exact data for the entire country, but in different districts and in different states, some uh, exercise has been done. For instance, in Hyderabad, our member Dr. Asma Zara had carried out a survey for the, for uh, regarding cases which were instituted in different courts during the last 10 years. And she found that uh, the number of divorces among the Muslims was less than the number of divorces among the other communities. Other communities. Sim similarly, in Lucknow, we also ca carried out some uh, such survey and we found that the number of uh, divorces was less than 1 percent. And therefore, it is not such a big problem, but definitely in some cases, the, um, the husbands do commit cruelty by pronouncing triple divorce in one sitting. In some cases, it may be justified. In most of the cases, it is not justified. There, which is it, a sin and uh, this sinful activity has been for this, uh, even the punishment of was given by the second caliph. So, this is something which is most condemnable, but merely because some law is being misused by some persons, that there is no ground for changing or for uh, abrogating or abrogating that law. Similarly, as several constitutional provisions have been misused by all the governments, emergency powers have been misused. Then uh, state emergency article 356 has been misused by all the governments. Even recently, the Supreme Court set aside two such orders passed by the central government. That does not mean that those, those powers have been abrogated. Those constitutional provisions still remain there. Every government party has retained it. So, the misuse cannot justify the abrogation or amendment or alteration of that law. Sir, uh, as a member of the board, as an executive member of the uh, all, in, all India Muslim Personal Law Board. What is your stand on it? What is the stand of the board? What stand has the board taken? The board has taken this very stand that as the Supreme Court has been ruling for the last 66 years and the law of the land is that courts will not interfere, do not in think it proper to interfere with the personal laws of any community. Even the case in the case of Hindus also the court has held in 1980s, in the case of tribals also court has held and in the case of Muslims also court has held in Ahmedabad Women Action Group case in 1997 that personal laws are uh, not uh, to be tested on the touchstone of articles 14, 15 and 21. They have a, a different kind of uh, their protection under the constitution of India. So, therefore, that should pre continue and whatever misuse is there, the Muslim community itself should address to it and we must uh, be more vigorously attempting to s ensure that such uh, uh, acts are not committed in future and at least they are minimized. So, see, sometimes the no law can be said that it is not uh, open to misuse, so, but then for that there may be some kind of punishment also as it was provided during that regime. Today we can't provide a punishment because the, this punishment part has been taken over by the government, government for the last more than 150 years. So, that is the government may think over it and may discuss with the Muslim uh, the scholars that uh, the punishment which was given during the regime of second caliph, in what manner we can compensate the uh, such women also who have been with whom this such an act has been committed. So, we can think over it and we can discuss with this. That is what we have said in the Supreme Court also. Sir, I also, uh, you said now that there are these acts which are committed, triple talaq is doing, there are people who are misusing it yes. and because of this act which are done by few people, entire uh, law cannot be changed, that is what you said. Uh, and also you said that you have been speaking to various community religious leaders uh, and sects. Uh, but you have absolutely no uh, this of discussing with the uh, government which is ruling. Um, why is it so? Why are you not uh, discussing with the government which because is ruling? Because the government is openly saying that we want to uh, abolish it, we want to change it. The government is not saying that we want to discuss it. The previous government which was open, we, we used to have meetings with the Prime Minister and Law Minister, etc. Present government is saying it has filed a affidavit in the Supreme Court saying that it is against gender justice. 
So, it has openly, Prime Minister has given a statement, other ministers have given a statement that we want to change it. But the government is not willing to discuss with it. The government is bent upon changing it. So we will resist it in the Supreme Court as well as in the Parliament. Sir, um, in this great country of ours, there are problems concerning the women and there can be various problems. It can be female feticide, um, it can be uh, education uh, for the girl child, it can be uh, dowry. We have got lot of problems. Why do you feel that of all these problems, um, uniform civil code has been chosen? What? Why? Because that, that is a part of their agenda and they want to show in UP elections that it is not that they have not been successful on any front because so far they were failures on all the fronts. The central government at the BJP was not having any issue <coughs> to tell the people that uh, they have succeeded there except one thing they are saying that the, uh, the surgical strike they are referring to but that is the credit goes to the military, credit goes to the army, not to the party itself. Therefore, they have come out with this uh, issue that is uniform civil code in order to convince their people, their electorate, their constituency that look here we have started doing and uh, implementing our agenda, our agenda manifesto in on the ground level. Otherwise, there is nothing. So, it is a political agenda. Sir, one question which uh, all our viewers would want to know. In Islam, is the female or the woman uh, subjected to any kind of uh, torture or um, is there any kind of biased justice for women? Can you elaborate on this? You see, I think that uh, we are fortunate to be Muslims in the sense that Islam is the only religion perhaps which had abolished all kinds of cruelties against women about 1400 years ago. You remember and you know that in that period also there was a kind of uh, this uh, practice that daughters used to be buried like forticide being done today. There, and then the Islam came heavily upon it and Prophet Muhammad showed the path that no girls or daughters are more important and he always said that, and he even went down to the extent of saying that one who has uh, procreated and uh, given training to two daughters will be with me in heavens. So, in this was the style in which the people were given the impression that daughters are more fortunate and a person who procreates them and then trains them and educates them for education also. So, several hadiths are there. Therefore, in no way, even in marriage, the, uh, it is misused if somebody has uh, deserted, but the divorce was introduced for the first time because to relieve the, the women from any kind of torture, any kind of cruelty. And sometimes you will find that women, uh, uh, female, they desire to be abandoned by such, such husbands who are committing cruelty upon them, atrocities upon them. Therefore, these things are all progressive steps which were later accepted and introduced in other religions. Right of property was first given in Islam. No other religion provided this right to property. Quran itself said that daughters also have got uh, this uh, right of inheritance mother has got right of inheritance, wife has got, widow has got right of, right of inheritance, sister has got it. Other religions have followed it very late. Even Christianity did not have this right of divorce. They initially did not have it. Hinduism had no such right of divorce. The Hinduism did not have right of inheritance of daughters. The Kopasri system was, was there. It was only in 1956 that they have introduced it. So, it cannot be said that Islam or any principle of Islam is in any way anti-women or in there is a, uh, in any way less protection. But since we believe it is a God-given law, therefore all the laws are there for the last 1400 years and they will continue for eternity. So, the rationale of those religions has to be explained. It is quite possible that Muslims may not be practicing it in that way. Therefore, people feel and people uh, consider that this is Islam. For instance, triple divorce without any justification is not uh, something which is approved by Islam. It is the most disapproved shape of uh, divorce. But since that is the only thing which, uh, uh, which uh, is seen by others, they feel that Islam is giving it, although Islam has condemned it. 
though its effect has taken place, it does take place, but it is most disapproved shape of divorce. It's approved shape is that once you give pronounce, then you wait for one month and it is possible that you can have a start uh, living together, then there is no need of divorce. Divorce is something which is said to be uh, most uh, unlike thing or undesirable thing among the permissible things. So, Islam is uh, not in any way against women. Islam has given so much rights to the women, which perhaps no other religion or no other society gives. But yes, it is in controlled manner. In Islam, there is nothing uncontrolled, there is nothing unregulated. It is controlled by the religion. Therefore, uh, we can say that is, women are most protected in Islam. Sir, also you said, uh, or rather, you know, whatever we gather news from somewhere, we have heard that just like how men can say that they do not want to stay with a with his wife there are also rights given to women who can also yes. if want they can separate from the husband yes yes, yes there is see in, do, in two manners one is this right of khula where his wife can demand that look here i want to get a divorce from you you pronounce a divorce and these are conditions Another is that there may be practice that husband delegates this power that is called uh, tafis, talaq tafis, delegates this power that on the happening of certain such events you can yourself pronounce divorce. Then uh, the third step is that women can approach the courts of law the, under the Dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act and there she can seek divorce. So in all uh, there are three modes of divorce for women, they can seek divorce. Thank you very much for educating us, sir. Um, last, uh, what message as a member of the board, what message would you like to give our viewers? Um, you can only say that uh, Muslims should educate the not only Muslims but also non-Muslims about the principles and about the underlying principles of uh, Islam and they should also practice Islam in a way which does not uh, come uh, which is considered as uh, even shape of Islam. These practices of uh, triple divorce and polygamy should be confined only to those situations where they are justified. They should not be misapplied and they should not be misused and in no way there should be any kind of torture upon women so that others may not have a chance to accuse Islam or to accuse Muslims that they are practicing uh, something which is not human. Islam is the most human religion which always gives the lesson of humanity. Therefore, there should be nothing inhuman, nothing uh, which can be objectionable. Uh, therefore, people must give this impression and this lesson and we should also convey our principles to non-Muslims so that they may not have wrong impression about Islam. Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Zafar Yaab Sahib. Aap ka, you have given us so much of your valuable time. Um, Thank you very much viewers and um, we at Prudent Media have always tried our best to educate you on the issues which are concerning the society. Do write to us, do give us a, your feedbacks. Uh, we would like to know from you about this program and if at all any suggestions, do write to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.